Prince Rogers Nelson was an American singer-songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, and record producer. He was a musical innovator who was known for his eclectic work, flamboyant stage presence, extravagant dress and makeup, and wide vocal range. His music integrates a wide variety of styles, including funk, rock, R&B, new wave, soul, psychedelia, and pop. He has sold over 100 million records worldwide making him one of the best-selling artists of all time. He won seven Grammy Awards, an American Music Award, a Golden Globe Award, and an Academy Award for the film Purple Rain. He was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2004, his first year of eligibility. Rolling Stone ranked Prince at number 27 on its list of 100 Greatest Artists, the most influential artists of the rock and roll era. Prince was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and developed an interest in music as a young child. He signed a recording contract with Warner Brothers at the age of 18, and released his debut album For You in 1978. His 1979 album Prince went platinum, and his next three records Dirty Mind, 1980, Controversy, 1981, and 1999-1982, continued his success showcasing Prince's prominently sexual lyrics and blending of funk, dance, and rock music. In 1984, he began referring to his backup band as The Revolution and released Purple Rain, the soundtrack album to his eponymous 1984 film debut. It quickly became his most critically and commercially successful release, spending 24 consecutive weeks atop the Billboard 200 and selling over 20 million units worldwide. After releasing the albums Around the World in a Day, 1985, and Parade, 1986, The Revolution disbanded, and Prince released the double album Sign O the Times, 1987, as a solo artist. He released three more solo albums before debuting the new Power Generation band in 1991. In 1993, while in a contractual dispute with Warner Brothers, he changed his stage name to an unpronounceable symbol also known as the love symbol, and began releasing new albums at a faster pace to remove himself from contractual obligations. He released five records between 1994 and 1996 before signing with Arista Records in 1998. In 2000, he began referring to himself as Prince again. He released 16 albums after that, including the platinum-selling Musicology, 2004. His final album, Hit and Run Phase 2, was first released on the title streaming service on December 12, 2015. Prince died from a fentanyl overdose at his Paisley Park recording studio and home in Chanhassen, Minnesota, on April 21, 2016, at the age of 57. Early Life Prince Rogers Nelson was born in Minneapolis, to Maddie Della, Nasha. 1933-2002, and John Lewis Nelson, 1916-2001. His parents were both African American and his family ancestry is centered in Louisiana, all four of his grandparents came from that state. Prince's father was a pianist and songwriter, and his mother was a jazz singer. Prince was given his father's stage name, Prince Rogers, which his father used while performing with a jazz group called the Prince Rogers Trio. In 1991, Prince's father told A Current Affair that I named my son Prince because I wanted him to do everything I wanted to do. Prince's childhood nickname was Skipper. Prince has said he was born epileptic and used to have seizures when he was young. He also said, My mother told me one day I walked into her and said, Mom, I'm not going to be sick anymore, and she said, Why, and I said, Because an angel told me so. Prince's sister Tyka Even, usually called Tyka, was born in 1960. Both siblings developed a keen interest in music, and this was encouraged by their father. Prince wrote his first tune, Funk Machine, on his father's piano when he was seven. When Prince was ten, his parents separated. Prince subsequently repeatedly switched homes sometimes living with his father and sometimes with his mother and stepfather. He then moved into the home of neighbors named Anderson and befriended their son Andre Anderson, who later became known as Andre Simony. 
Prince attended Minneapolis Bryant Junior High and then Central High School, where he played football, basketball, and baseball. He played on Central's junior varsity basketball team, and continued to play basketball recreationally as an adult. Prince met Jimmy Jam in 1973 in junior high, and impressed him during music class with his musical talent, his early mastery of a wide range of instruments, and his work ethic. Career 1975-1984, Beginnings and Breakthrough In 1975, Pepe Willy, the husband of Prince's cousin, Chantel, formed the band 94 East with Marcy Ingvoldstad and Christy Lazenberry, hiring Andre Simony and Prince to record tracks Willy wrote the songs, and Prince contributed guitar tracks, and Prince and Willy Co. wrote the 94 East song, Just Another Sucker. The band recorded tracks which later became the album Minneapolis Genius The Historic 1977 Recordings. In 1976, Prince created a demo tape with producer Chris Moon, in Moon's Minneapolis studio. Unable to secure a recording contract, Moon brought the tape to Owen Husney, a Minneapolis businessman, who signed Prince, age 17, to a management contract and helped him create a demo at Sound 80 Studios in Minneapolis, with producer-engineer David Z. The demo recording, along with a press kit produced at Husney's ad agency, resulted in interest from several record companies including Warner Brothers Records, Ondem Records, and Columbia Records. With the help of Husney, Prince signed a recording contract with Warner Brothers. The record company agreed to give Prince creative control for three albums and ownership of the publishing rights. Husney and Prince then left Minneapolis and moved to Sausalito, California, where Prince's first album, For You, was recorded at Record Plant Studios. The album was mixed in Los Angeles and released on April 7, 1978. According to the For You album notes, Prince wrote, produced, arranged, composed, and played all 27 instruments on the recording, except for the song Soft and Wet, whose lyrics were CO written by Moon. The cost of recording the album was twice Prince's initial advance. Prince used the Prince's Music Co. to publish his songs. Soft and Wet reached number 12 on the Hot Soul Singles chart and number 92 on the Billboard Hot 100. The song Just As Long As We're Together reached number 91 on the Hot Soul Singles chart. In 1979, Prince created a band with Andre Simony on bass, Des Dickerson on guitar, Gail Chapman and Dr. Fink on keyboards, and Bobby Z on drums. Their first show was at the Capri Theatre on January 5, 1979. Warner Brothers executives attended the show but decided that Prince and the band needed more time to develop his music. In October 1979, Prince released the album, Prince which was number 4 on the Billboard Top Rand Black Albums charts and number 22 on the Billboard 200, and went platinum. It contained two Rand B hits, Why You Wanna Treat Me So Bad, and I Wanna Be Your Lover. I Wanna Be Your Lover sold over a million copies, and reached number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number 1 for two weeks on the Hot Soul Singles chart. Prince performed both these songs on January 26, 1980 on American Bandstand. On this album, Prince used Ichnirp Music BMI. In 1980, Prince released the album Dirty Mind, which contained sexually explicit material, including the title song, Head, and the song Sister, and was described by Stephen Thomas Erlewine as a stunning, audacious amalgam of funk, new wave, rand B, and pop, fueled by grinningly salacious sex and the desire to shock. Recorded in Prince's own studio, this album was certified gold, and the single Uptown reached number 5 on the Billboard Dance Chart and number 5 on the Hot Soul Singles Charts. Prince was also the opening act for Rick James' 1980 Fire It Up tour. In February 1981, Prince made his first appearance on Saturday Night Live, performing Party Up. In October 1981, Prince released the album, Controversy. He played several dates in support of it, at first as one of the opening acts for the Rolling Stones, on their U.S. tour. He began 1982 with a small tour of college towns where he was the headlining act. 
The songs on Controversy were published by Controversy Music as Cap, a practice he continued until the Emancipation album in 1996. By 2002, MTV News noted that and now all of his titles, liner notes and web postings are written in his own shorthand spelling, as seen on 1999's Rave UN2 The Joy Fantastic, which featured Hot Wit You. In 1981, Prince formed a side project band called The Time. The band released four albums between 1981 and 1990, with Prince writing and performing most of the instrumentation and backing vocals, sometimes credited under the pseudonyms Jamie Starr or The Star Company, with lead vocals by Morris Day. In late 1982, Prince released a double album, 1999 which sold over 3 million copies. The title track was a protest against nuclear proliferation and became Prince's first top 10 hit in countries outside the US. Prince's Little Red Corvette was one of the first two videos by black artists, along with Michael Jackson's Billie Jean, played in heavy rotation on MTV, which had been perceived as against black music until CBS president Walter Yetnikoff threatened to pull all CBS videos. The song Delirious also placed in the top 10 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. International Lover earned Prince his first Grammy Award nomination at the 26th Annual Grammy Awards. 1984-1987, The Revolution, Purple Rain, and subsequent releases. During this period Prince referred to his band as The Revolution. The band's name was also printed, in reverse, on the cover of 1999 inside the letter I of the word Prince. The band consisted of Lisa Coleman and Dr. Fink on keyboards, Bobby Z on drums, Brown Mark on bass, and Des Dickerson on guitar. Jill Jones, a backing singer, was also part of the lineup for the 1999 album and tour. Following the 1999 tour, Dickerson left the group for religious reasons. In the book Possessed, The Rise and Fall of Prince, 2003, Author Alex Hahn says that Dickerson was reluctant to sign a three-year contract and wanted to pursue other musical ventures. Dickerson was replaced by Coleman's friend Wendy Melvwan. At first the band was used sparsely in the studio, but this gradually changed during the mid-1980s. According to his former manager Bob Cavallo, in the early 1980s Prince required his management to obtain a deal for him to star in a major motion picture despite the fact that his exposure at that point was limited to several pop music hits and music videos. This resulted in the hit film Purple Rain, 1984, which starred Prince and was loosely autobiographical, and the eponymous studio album, which was also the soundtrack to the film. The Purple Rain album sold more than 13 million copies in the US and spent 24 consecutive weeks at number one on the Billboard 200 chart. The film won Prince an Academy Award for Best Original Song Score and grossed over $68 million in the U.S. Songs from the film were hits on pop charts around the world, when Doves Cry and Let's Go Crazy reached number one, and the title track reached number two on the Billboard Hot 100. At one point in 1984, Prince simultaneously had the number one album, single, and film in the U.S., it was the first time a singer had achieved this feat. The Purple Rain album is ranked 72nd in Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Albums of All Time, it is also included on the list of Time Magazine's all-time 100 albums. The album also produced two of Prince's first three Grammy Awards earned at the 27th Annual Grammy Awards Sandm Dash, Best Rock Performance by a Duo or Group with Vocal and Best Score Soundtrack for Visual Media. After Tipper Gore heard her 11-year-old daughter Karenna listening to Prince's song Darling Nikki, which gained wide notoriety for its sexual lyrics and a reference to masturbation, she founded the Parents Music Resource Center. The center advocates the mandatory use of a warning label, parental advisory, explicit lyrics, on the covers of records that have been judged to contain language or lyrical content unsuitable for minors. The recording industry later voluntarily complied with this request. In 1985, Prince announced that he would discontinue live performances and music videos after the release of his next album. His subsequent recording, Around the World in a Day, 1985, held the number one spot on the Billboard 200 for three weeks. From that album, 
the single Raspberry Beret reached number 2 on the Billboard Hot 100, and Pop Life reached number 7. In 1986, his album Parade reached number 3 on the Billboard 200 and number 2 on the Rand B charts. The first single, Kiss, with the video choreographed by Louis Falco, reached number 1 on the Billboard Hot 100. The song was originally written for a side project called Maserati. In the same year, the song Manic Monday, written by Prince and recorded by the Bengals, reached number two on the Hot 100 chart. The album Parade served as the soundtrack for Prince's second film, Under the Cherry Moon, 1986. Prince directed and starred in the movie, which also featured Kristen Scott Thomas. Although the Parade album went platinum, under the Cherry Moon received a Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Picture, tied with Howard the Duck, and Prince received Golden Raspberry Awards for Worst Director, Worst Actor, and Worst Original Song, for the song Love or Money. In 1986, Prince began a series of live performances called the Hit and Run Parade Tour. After the tour Prince disbanded the revolution and fired Wendy and Lisa. Brown Mark quit the band, keyboardist Dr. Fink remained. Prince recruited new band members Michael Weaver on guitar, Atlanta Bliss on trumpet, and Eric Leeds on saxophone. 1987-1991, Solo Again, Sign O The Times Prior to the disbanding of The Revolution, Prince was working on two separate projects, the Revolution album Dream Factory and a solo effort, Camille. Unlike the three previous band albums, Dream Factory included input from the band members and featured songs with lead vocals by Wendy and Lisa. The Camille project saw Prince create a new androgynous persona primarily singing in a sped-up, female-sounding voice. With the dismissal of the revolution, Prince consolidated material from both shelved albums, along with some new songs, into a 3LP album to be titled Crystal Ball. Warner Brothers forced Prince to trim the triple album to a double album, and Sign O The Times was released on March 31, 1987. The album peaked at number 6 on the Billboard 200 Albums chart. The first single, Sign O The Times, charted at number 3 on the Hot 100. The follow up single, If I Was Your Girlfriend, charted at number 67 on the Hot 100 but went to number 12 on Rand B chart. The third single, a duet with Sheena Easton, You Got the Look charted at number 2 on the Hot 100 and number 11 on the Rand B chart and the final single, I Could Never Take the Place of Your Man, finished at number 10 on Hot 100 and number 14 on the Rand B chart. It was named the top album of the year by the Pez and Jop critics poll and sold 3.2 million copies. In Europe it performed well, and Prince promoted the album overseas with a lengthy tour. Putting together a new backing band from the remnants of the revolution, Prince added bassist Levi Caesar, Jr., keyboardist Boney Boyer, and dancer-choreographer Cat Glover to go with new drummer Sheila E. and holdovers Michael Weaver, Dr. Fink, Eric Leeds, Atlanta Bliss, and the Bodyguards, Jerome, Wally Safford, and Greg Brooks, for the Sign O' The Times Tour. The Sign O' The Times Tour was a success overseas, and Warner Brothers and Prince's managers wanted to bring it to the U.S. to promote sales of the album. Prince balked at a full U.S. tour, as he was ready to produce a new album. As a compromise, the last two nights of the tour were filmed for release in movie theaters. The film quality was deemed subpar, and reshoots were performed at Prince's Paisley Park Studios. The film Sign O' The Times was released on November 20, 1987. The film got better reviews than Under the Cherry Moon, but its box office receipts were minimal and it quickly left theaters. The next album intended for release was The Black Album. More instrumental and funk and Rand B themed than recent releases, The Black Album also saw Prince experiment with hip-hop music on the songs Bob George and Dead On It. Prince was set to release the album with a monochromatic black cover with only the catalog number printed, but after 500,000 copies had been pressed, Prince had a spiritual epiphany that the album was evil and had it recalled. It was later released by Warner Brothers as a limited edition album in 1994. Prince went back in the studio for eight weeks and recorded Love Sexy. Released on May 10, 1988, Love Sexy serves as a spiritual opposite to the Dark The Black album. 
Every song is a solo effort by Prince, except I Know, which was recorded with his backing band at the time. Love Sexy reached number 11 on the Billboard 200 and number 5 on the Rand B Albums chart. The lead single, Alphabet ST, peaked at number 8 on the Hot 100 and number 3 on the Rand B chart, it sold 750,000 copies. Prince again took his post-revolution backing band, minus the Bodyguards, on a three-leg, 84-show Love Sexy World Tour, although the shows were well received by huge crowds, they lost money due to the expensive sets and props. In 1989, Prince appeared on Madonna's studio album Like a Prayer, CO writing and singing the duet Love Song and playing electric guitar, uncredited, on the songs Like a Prayer, Keep It Together, and Act of Contrition. He also began work on several musical projects, including Rave Unto the Joy Fantastic and early drafts of his Graffiti Bridge film, but both were put on hold when he was asked by Batman, 1989, director Tim Burton to record several songs for the upcoming live-action adaptation. Prince went into the studio and produced an entire nine-track album that Warner Brothers released on June 20, 1989. Batman peaked at number one on the Billboard 200, selling 4.3 million copies. The single Bat Dance topped the Billboard and Rand B charts. The single, The Arms of Orion with Sheena Easton, charted at number 36, and Partyman, also featuring the vocals of Prince's then-girlfriend, nicknamed Anna Fantastic, charted at number 18 on the Hot 100 and at number 5 on the Rand B chart, and the love ballad Scandalous went to number 5 on the Rand B chart. Prince had to sign away all publishing rights to the songs on the album to Warner Brothers as part of the deal to do the soundtrack. In 1990, Prince went back on tour with a revamped band for his Back to Basics nude tour. With the departures of Boney Boyer, Sheila E., The Horns, and Cat, Prince brought in keyboardist Rosie Gaines, drummer Michael Bland, and dancing trio The Game Boys, Tony M., Kirky J., and Damon Dixon. The European and Japanese tour was a financial success with a short, greatest hits set list. As the year progressed, Prince finished production on his fourth film, Graffiti Bridge, 1990, and the 1990 album of the same name. Initially, Warner Brothers was reluctant to fund the film, but with Prince's assurances it would be a sequel to Purple Rain as well as the involvement of the original members of the time, the studio greenlit the project. Released on August 20, 1990, the album reached number 6 on the Billboard 200 and Rand B Albums chart. The single Thieves in the Temple reached number 6 on the Hot 100 and number 1 on the Rand B chart, Round and Round placed at number 12 on the US charts and number 2 on the Rand B charts. The song featured the teenage Tevin Campbell, who also had a role in the film, on lead vocals. The film, released on November 20, 1990, was a box office flop, grossing $4.2 million. After the release of the film and album, the last remaining members of the revolution, Michael Weaver and Dr. Fink, left Prince's band. 1991-1994, The New Power Generation, Diamonds and Pearls, and Name Change. 1991 marked the debut of Prince's new band, The New Power Generation. With guitarist Michael Weaver and longtime keyboardist Dr. Fink gone, Prince added bass player Sonny T, Tommy Barbarella on keyboards, and a brass section known as the Hornheads to go along with Levi Caesar, taking over on guitar, Rosie Gaines, Michael Bland, and the Game Boys. With significant input from his band members, Diamonds and Pearls was released on October 1, 1991. Reaching number 3 on the Billboard 200 album chart, Diamonds and Pearls saw four hit singles released in the United States. Get Off peaked at number 21 on the Hot 100 and number 6 on the Rand B charts, followed by Cream, which gave Prince his fifth U.S. number one single. The title track Diamonds and Pearls became the album's third single, reaching number 3 on the Hot 100 and the top spot on the Rand B charts. Money Don't Matter Tonight peaked at number 23 and number 14 on the Hot 100 and Rand B charts respectively. In 1992, Prince and the New Power Generation released his 12th album, Love Symbol Album, bearing only an unpronounceable symbol on the cover, 
later copyrighted as Love Symbol No. 2. The album peaked at number 5 on the Billboard 200. The label wanted 7 to be the first single, but Prince fought to place My Name is Prince in that slot, as he felt that the song's more hip hoppery would appeal to the same audience that had purchased the previous album. Prince got his way, but My Name is Prince reached number 36 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number 23 on the Rand B chart. The follow up single Sexy MF charted at number 66 on the Hot 100 and number 76 on the Rand B chart. The label's preferred lead single Choice 7 reached No. 7. Love Symbol album went on to sell 2.8 million copies worldwide. After two failed attempts in 1990 and 1991, Warner Brothers released a greatest hits compilation with the three disc The Hits The B-Sides in 1993. The first two discs were also sold separately as The Hits 1 and The Hits 2. The collection features the majority of Prince's hit singles, with the exception of Bat Dance and other songs that appeared on the Batman soundtrack and several previously hard-to-find recordings, including B-sides spanning the majority of Prince's career, as well as some previously unreleased tracks such as the Revolution-recorded Power Fantastic and a live recording of Nothing Compares to You with Rosie Gaines. Two new songs, Pink Cashmere and Peach, were chosen as promotional singles to accompany the compilation album. In 1993, in Rebellion Against Warner Brothers, which refused to release Prince's enormous backlog of music at a steady pace, he changed his name to, which was explained as a combination of the symbols for male, and female, dot in order to use the symbol in print media, Warner Brothers had to organize a mass mailing of floppy disks with a custom font. The symbol was soon dubbed the love symbol, and until 2000, Prince was referred to as the artist formerly known as Prince or simply the artist. 1994-2000, Increased Output and the Gold Experience In 1994, Prince began to release albums in quick succession as a means of releasing himself from his contractual obligations to Warner Brothers. The label, he believed, was intent on limiting his artistic freedom by insisting that he release albums more sporadically. He also blamed Warner Brothers for the poor commercial performance of the Love Symbol album, claiming they had marketed it insufficiently. It was out of these developments that the aborted The Black Album was officially released, seven years after its initial recording. The new release was already in wide circulation as a bootleg. Warner Brothers then succumbed to Prince's wishes to release an album of new material, to be entitled Come. Prince pushed to have his next album The Gold Experience released simultaneously with Love Symbol era material. Warner Brothers allowed the single The Most Beautiful Girl in the World to be released via a small, independent distributor, Bellmark Records, in February 1994. The release reached number 3 on the US Billboard Hot 100 and number 1 in many other countries, but it did not prove to be a model for subsequent releases. Warner Brothers still resisted releasing The Gold Experience, fearing poor sales and citing market saturation as a defense. When released in September 1995, The Gold Experience reached the top 10 of the Billboard 200 initially. The album is now out of print. Chaos and Disorder, released in 1996, was Prince's final album of new material for Warner Brothers, as well as one of his least commercially successful releases. Prince attempted a major comeback later that year when, free of any further contractual obligations to Warner Brothers, he released Emancipation, a 36-song, 3-CD set, each disc was exactly 60 minutes long. The album was released via his own NPG Records with distribution through Emmy. To publish his songs on Emancipation, Prince did not use Controversy Music ASCAP, which he had used for all his records since 1981, but rather used Emancipated Music Incorporated ASCAP. Certified Platinum by the RIAA Emancipation is the first record featuring covers by Prince of songs of other artists, Joan Osborne's top 10 hit song of 1995 One of Us, Betcha by Golly Wow. Written by Thomas Randolph Bell and Linda Creed, I Can't Make You Love Me, written by James Allen Shamblin II and Michael Berry Reed, and La La, Means I Love You, written by Thomas Randolph Bell and William Hart. Prince released Crystal Ball, 
a 5 CD collection of unreleased material, in 1998. The distribution of this album was disorderly, with some fans pre ordering the album on his website up to a year before it was shipped. These pre orders were delivered months after the record had gone on sale in retail stores. The retail edition has only four discs, as it is missing the Kama Sutra disc. There are also two different packaging editions for retail, one is a four-disc sized jewel case with a white cover and the love symbol in a colored circle while the other contains all four discs in a round translucent snap jewel case. The discs are the same, as is the CD jacket. The New Power Soul album was released three months later. His collaborations on Chaka Khan's Come To My House and Larry Graham's GCS 2000 both released on the NPG Records label around the same time as New Power Soul, were promoted by live appearances on Vibe with Sinbad and the NBC Today Show's summer concert series. In 1999, Prince once again signed with a major label, Arista Records, to release a new record, Rave UN2 The Joy Fantastic. In an attempt to make his new album a success, Prince gave more interviews than at any other point in his career, appearing on MTV's Total Request Live, with his album cover on the front of the Virgin Megastore, in the background on TRL throughout the whole show, Larry King Live, with Larry Graham, and other media outlets. A few months earlier, Warner Brothers had also released The Vault, Old Friends for Sale, a collection of unreleased material recorded by Prince throughout his career. The pay-per-view concert, Rave UN2 The Year 2000 was broadcast on December 31, 1999 and consisted of footage from the December 17 and 18 concerts of his 1999 tour. The concert featured appearances by guest musicians including Lenny Kravitz, George Clinton, Jimmy Russell, and The Time. It was released to home video the following year. 2000-2007, Turnaround, Musicology, Label Change, and 3121. On May 16, 2000, Prince stopped using the love symbol moniker and returned to using Prince, after his publishing contract with Warner Chappell expired. In a press conference, he stated that, after being freed from undesirable relationships associated with the name Prince, he would revert to using his real name. Prince continued to use the symbol as a logo and on album artwork and to play a love symbol shaped guitar. For several years following the release of Rave UN2 The Joy Fantastic, Prince primarily released new music through his internet subscription service, npgonlineltd.com, later npgmusicclub.com. In 2002, Prince released his first live album, One Night Alone. Live which features performances from the One Night Alone, tour. The three-CD box set also includes a disc of after-show music entitled It Ain't Over. During this time, Prince sought to engage more effectively with his fan base via the NPG Music Club, pre-concert sound checks, and at yearly celebrations at Paisley Park, his music studios. Fans were invited into the studio for tours, interviews, discussions, and music listening sessions. Some of these fan discussions were filmed for an unreleased documentary, directed by Kevin Smith. On February 8, 2004, Prince appeared at the 46th Annual Grammy Awards with Beyoncé. In a performance that opened the show, they performed a medley of Purple Rain, Let's Go Crazy, Baby I'm a Star, and Beyoncé's Crazy in Love. The following month, Prince was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The award was presented to him by Alicia Keys along with Big B.O.I. and Andre 3000 of Outkast. As well as performing a trio of his own hits during the ceremony, Prince also participated in a tribute to fellow inductee George Harrison in a rendering of Harrison's While My Guitar Gently Weeps, playing a two-minute guitar solo that ended the song. He also performed the song Red House as Purple House on the album Power of Soul, a tribute to Jimi Hendrix. In April 2004, Prince released Musicology through a one-album agreement with Columbia Records. The album rose as high as the top five on some international charts, including the US, UK, Germany, and Australia. The US chart success was assisted by the CDs being included as part of the concert ticket purchase, thereby qualifying each CD, as chart rules then stood, to count toward US chart placement. 
Three months later, Spin named him the greatest frontman of all time. That same year, Rolling Stone magazine named Prince as the highest earning musician in the world, with an annual income of $56.5 million, largely due to his musicology tour, which Polestar named as the top concert draw among musicians in U.S. He played 96 concerts, the average ticket price for a show was $61. US Musicology went on to receive two Grammy wins, for Best Male Rand B Vocal Performance for Call My Name and Best Traditional Rand B Vocal Performance for the title track. Musicology was also nominated for Best Rand B Song and Best Rand B Album, and Cinnamon Girl was nominated for Best Male Pop Vocal Performance. Rolling Stone magazine has ranked Prince number 27 on their list of 100 greatest artists of all time. In April 2005, Prince played guitar, along with En Vogue singing backing vocals, on Stevie Wonder's single So What the Fuss, Wonder's first since 1999. In late 2005, Prince signed with Universal Records to release his album, 3121 on March 21, 2006. The first single was T.E.M.O. Corazon, the video for which was directed by actress Salma Hayek and filmed in Marrakesh, Morocco, featuring Argentine actress and singer Mia Maestro. The video for the second single, Black Sweat, was nominated at the MTV VMAs for Best Cinematography. The immediate success of 3121 gave Prince his first number one debut on the Billboard 200 with the album. To promote the new album, Prince was the musical guest on Saturday Night Live on February 4, 2006, 17 years after his last SNL appearance on the 15th anniversary special, and nearly 25 years since his first appearance on a regular episode in 1981. At the 2006 Webby Awards on June 12, Prince received a Webby Lifetime Achievement Award in recognition of his visionary use of the Internet to distribute music and connect with audiences exemplified by his decision to release his album Crystal Ball, 1997, exclusively online. In July 2006, weeks after winning a Webby Award, Prince shut down his NPG Music Club website, after more than five years of operation. On the day of the music club's shutdown, a lawsuit was filed against Prince by the British company Hum Publishing, owners of the Nature Publishing Group, also NPG. Despite these events occurring on the same day, Prince's attorney stated that the site did not close due to the trademark dispute. Prince appeared at multiple award ceremonies in 2006, on February 15, he performed at the 2006 Brit Awards, along with Wendy and Lisa and Sheila E., and on June 27, Prince appeared at the 2006 BET Awards, where he was awarded Best Male Rand B Artist. Prince performed a medley of Chaka Khan songs for Khan's Bet Lifetime Achievement Award. In November 2006, Prince was inducted into the UK Music Hall of Fame, he appeared to collect his award but did not perform. Also in November 2006, Prince opened a nightclub called 3121, in Las Vegas at the Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino. He performed weekly on Friday and Saturday nights until April 2007, when his contract with the Rio ended. On August 22, 2006, Prince released Ultimate Prince. The double disc set contains one CD of previous hits, and another of extended versions and mixes of material that had largely only previously been available on vinyl record B-sides. That same year, Prince wrote and performed a song for the hit animated film Happy Feet, 2006. The song, The Song of the Heart, appears on the film's soundtrack, which also features a cover of Prince's earlier hit Kiss, sung by Nicole Kidman and Hugh Jackman. In January 2007, The Song of the Heart won a Golden Globe for Best Original Song. 2007-2010, Super Bowl 41, Planet Earth, and Lotus Flower. On February 2, 2007, Prince played at the Super Bowl 41 press conference. Prince performed at the Super Bowl 41 halftime show in Miami, Florida on February 4, 2007, on a large stage shaped like his symbol. The event was carried to 140 million television viewers, his biggest ever audience. 
In 2015, Billboard.com ranked the performance as the greatest Super Bowl performance ever. Prince played 21 concerts in London during mid-2007. The Earth Tour included 21 nights at the 20,000 capacity O2 Arena, with Maceo Parker in his band. Tickets for the O2 Arena were kept by Prince at £31.21, $48.66. The residency at the O2 Arena was increased to 15 nights after all 140,000 tickets for the original seven sold out in 20 minutes. It was then further extended to 21 nights. Prince performed with Sheila E. at the 2007 Alma Awards. On June 28, 2007, The Mail on Sunday stated that it had made a deal to give Prince's new album, Planet Earth, away for free with the paper, making it the first place in the world to get the album. This move sparked controversy among music distributors and also led the UK arm of Prince's distributor, Sony BMG, to withdraw from distributing the album in UK stores. The UK's largest high street music retailer, HMV, stocked the paper on release day due to the giveaway. On July 7, 2007, Prince returned to Minneapolis to perform three shows. He performed concerts at the Macy's Auditorium, to promote his new perfume 3121, on Nicolette Mall, the Target Center Arena, and First Avenue. It was the first time he had played at First Avenue, the club appeared in the film Purple Rain, since 1987. From 2008, Prince was managed by UK-based Kiran Sharma. On April 25, 2008, Prince performed on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, where he debuted a new song, Turn Me Loose. Days after, he headlined the 2008 Coachella Festival. Prince was paid more than $5 million for his performance at Coachella, according to Reuters. Prince cancelled a concert, planned at Dublin's Croke Park on June 16, 2008, at 10 days' notice. In October 2009 promoters MCD Productions went to court to sue him for €1.6 million Euros to refund 55,126 tickets. Prince settled the case out of court in February 2010 for $2.95 million. During the trial, it was said that Prince had been offered $22 million for seven concerts as part of a proposed 2008 European tour. In October 2008, Prince released a live album entitled Indigo Nights, a collection of songs performed live at after shows in the Indigo 2. On December 18, 2008, Prince premiered four songs from his new album on LA's indie rock radio station Indy 103.1. The radio station's programmers Max Tokoff and Mark Sovell had been invited to Prince's home to hear the new rock-oriented music. Prince gave them a CD with four songs to premiere on their radio station. The music debuted the next day on Jonasy's Jukebox, hosted by former Sex Pistol Steve Jones. On January 3, 2009, the new website lotusflow3r.com was launched, streaming and selling some of the recently aired material and concert tickets. On January 31, Prince released two more songs on lotusflow3r.com, Disco Jellyfish, and Another Boy. Chocolate Box, Colonized Mind, and All This Love were later released on the website. Prince released a triple album set containing Lotus Flower, Mpl Sound, and an album credited to Bria Valenti, called Elixir, on March 24, 2009, followed by a physical release on March 29. On July 18, 2009, Prince performed two shows at the Montreux Jazz Festival, backed by the new power generation including Rhonda Smith, Renato Nito, and John Blackwell. On October 11, 2009, he gave two surprise concerts at the Grand Palette. On October 12, he gave another surprise performance at La Seagal. On October 24, Prince played a concert at Paisley Park. 2010-2012, 2010 and Welcome to Tours. In January 2010, Prince wrote a new song, Purple and Gold, inspired by his visit to a Minnesota Vikings football game against the Dallas Cowboys. The following month, 
Prince Let Minneapolis Area Public Radio Station 89.3 The current premiere his new song Cause and Effect as a gesture in support of independent radio. In 2010, Prince was listed in Time Magazine's annual ranking of the 100 most influential people in the world. Prince released a new single on Minneapolis radio station 89.3 The Current called Hot Summer on June 7, his 52nd birthday. Also in June, Prince appeared on the cover of the July 2010 issue of Ebony, and he received the Lifetime Achievement Award at the 2010 BET Awards. Prince released his album 2010 in July 2010 as a free cover mount with publications in the UK, Belgium, Germany, and France. He refused album access to digital download services and closed lotusflow3r.com. On July 4, 2010, Prince began his 20TN tour, a concert tour in two legs with shows in Europe. The second leg began on October 15 and ended with a concert following the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix on November 14. The second half of the tour had a new band, John Blackwell, Ida Christine Nielsen, and Sheila E. Prince let Europe one day view the snippet of his new song Rich Friends from the new album 2010 Deluxe on October 8, 2010. Prince started the Welcome To Tour on December 15, 2010. Prince was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame on December 7, 2010. On February 12, 2011, Prince presented Barbara Streisand with an award and donated $1.5 million to charities. On the same day, it was reported that he had not authorized the television show Glee to cover his hit Kiss, in an episode that had already been filmed. Prince headlined the Hop Farm Festival on July 3, 2011, marking his first UK show since 2007 and his first ever UK festival appearance. Despite having previously rejected the internet for music distribution, on November 24, 2011, Prince released a reworked version of the previously unreleased song Extra Lovable through both iTunes and Spotify. Purple Music, a Switzerland-based record label, released a CD single Dance For Me on December 12, 2011, as part of a club remixes package including Bria Valenti CD single Two Night released on February 23, 2012. The CD features club remixes by Jamie Lewis and David Alexander, produced by Prince. 2013-2016, Three Radia Girl and Return to Warner Brothers. In January 2013, Prince released a lyric video for a new song called Screwdriver. In April 2013, Prince announced a West Coast tour titled Live Out Loud Tour with Three Radia Girl as his backing band. The final two dates of the first leg of the tour were in Minneapolis where former Revolution drummer Bobby Z sat in as guest drummer on both shows. In May, Prince announced a deal with Cobalt Music to market and distribute his music. On August 14, 2013, Prince released a new solo single for download through the 3rdeygirl.com website. The single Breakfast Can Wait had cover art featuring comedian Dave Chappelle's impersonation of the singer in a sketch on the 2000s Comedy Central series Chappelle's Show. In February 2014, Prince performed concerts with Three Radia Girl in London titled The Hit and Run Tour. Beginning with intimate shows, the first was held at the London home of singer Leanne La Havas, followed by two performances of what Prince described as a sound check at the Electric Ballroom in Camden, and another at Shepherd's Bush Empire. On April 18, 2014, Prince released a new single entitled The Breakdown. He re-signed with his former label, Warner Brothers Records after an 18-year split. Warner announced that Prince would release a remastered deluxe edition of his 1984 album Purple Rain in 2014 to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the album. In return, Warner gave Prince ownership of the master recordings of his Warner Recordings. In spring 2014 he launched NPG Publishing a music company to administer his own music and that of other artists without the restrictions of mainstream record companies. In May 2015, following the death of Freddie Gray and the subsequent riots, Prince released a song entitled Baltimore in tribute to Gray and in support of the protesters in Baltimore.
He also held a tribute concert for Grey at his Paisley Park estate called Dance Rally for Peace in which he encouraged fans to wear the color grey in honor of Freddie Grey. Prince's penultimate album, Hit and Run Phase 1, was first made available on September 7, 2015, on the music streaming service title before being released on CD and download on September 14. His last album, Hit and Run Phase 2, was meant as a continuation of this one, and was released on title for streaming and download on December 12, 2015. The first projects to be announced following Prince's death were a Greatest Hits album, Forever which was released in November 2016, and an expanded and remastered reissue of Purple Rain for 2017. Illness and Death Prince saw Dr. Michael T. Schulenberg, a Twin Cities specialist in family medicine in Excelsior, on April 7, 2016, and again on April 20. On April 7, Prince postponed two performances at the Fox Theatre in Atlanta from his piano and a microphone tour, the venue released a statement saying he had influenza. Prince rescheduled and performed the show on April 14, even though he still was not feeling well. While flying back to Minneapolis early the next morning, he became unresponsive, and his private jet made an emergency landing at Quad City International Airport in Mullen, Illinois, where he was hospitalized and received Narcan, but he left against medical advice. Representatives said he suffered from dehydration and had influenza for several weeks. Prince was seen bicycling the next day in his hometown of Chanhassen. He shopped that evening at the Electric Fetus in Minneapolis for Record Store Day and made a brief appearance at an impromptu dance party at his Paisley Park recording studio complex, stating that he was feeling fine. On April 19, he attended a performance by singer Liz Wright at the Dakota Jazz Club. On April 20, Prince's representatives called Dr. Howard Kornfeld, a California specialist in addiction medicine and pain management, seeking medical help for Prince. Kornfeld scheduled to meet with Prince on April 22, and he contacted a local physician who cleared his schedule for a physical examination on April 21. On April 21, at 9.43 a.m., the Carver County Sheriff's Office received a 9-1-1 call requesting that an ambulance be sent to Prince's home at Paisley Park. The caller initially told the dispatcher that an unidentified person at the home was unconscious, then moments later said he was dead, and finally identified the person as Prince. The caller was Dr. Kornfeld's son, who had flown in with buprenorphine that morning to devise a treatment plan for opioid addiction. Emergency responders found Prince unresponsive in an elevator and performed CPR, but a paramedic said he had been dead for about six hours, and they were unable to revive him. They pronounced him dead at 10.07 a.m., 19 minutes after their arrival. There were no signs of suicide or foul play. A press release from the Midwest Medical Examiner's Office in Anoka County on June 2 stated that Prince had died of an accidental overdose of fentanyl, at the age of 57. It is not yet known whether Prince obtained the fentanyl by a prescription or through an illicit channel. However, the question of how and from what source Prince obtained the drug which led to his demise is the subject of investigations by several law enforcement agencies. Sealed search warrant was issued for his estate, and another, unsealed, warrant was issued for the local Walgreens pharmacy. Following an autopsy, his remains were cremated. On April 26, 2016, Prince's sister and only full sibling Tyka Nelson filed court documents in Carver County to open a probate case, stating that no will had been found. Prince's five half-siblings also have a claim to his estate. As of three weeks after his death, 700 people claimed to be half-siblings or descendants. Bremer Trust was given temporary control of his estate, had his vault drilled open, and was authorized to obtain a blood sample for DNA profiling. Prince's cremated remains were placed into a custom. 3D printed urn shaped like the Paisley Park estate. The urn was placed on display in the atrium of the Paisley Park complex in October 2016. Remembrances Numerous musicians and cultural figures reacted to Prince's death. President Barack Obama mourned him, and the United States Senate passed a resolution praising his achievements as a musician, composer, innovator, and cultural icon. 
Cities across the U.S. held tributes and vigils, and lit buildings, bridges, and other venues in purple. In the first five hours after the media reported his death, Prince was the top trending term on Twitter, and Facebook had 61 million Prince-related interactions. MTV interrupted its programming to air a marathon of Prince music videos and Purple Rain. AMC theaters and Carmike Cinemas screened Purple Rain in select theaters over the following week. Saturday Night Live aired an episode in his honor titled Good Night, Sweet Prince, featuring his performances from the show. Nielsen Music reported an initial sales spike of 42,000%. Prince's catalog sold 4.41 million albums and songs from April 21 to 28, with five albums simultaneously in the top 10 of the Billboard 200, a first in the chart's history. At the 59th Grammy Awards, Morris Day with The Time and Bruno Mars performed a tribute to him. Artistry Music and Image the Los Angeles Times called Prince our first post-everything pop star, defying easy categories of race, genre, and commercial appeal. John Perels of The New York Times described him as a master architect of funk, rock, R&B, and pop, and highlighted his ability to defy labels. Los Angeles Times writer Randall Roberts called Prince among the most versatile and restlessly experimental pop artists of our time writing that his early work connected disco and synthetic funk while his fruitful mid-period merged rock, soul, R&B and synth-pop. Simon Reynolds called him a pop polymath, flitting between funkadelia, acid rock, deep soul, schmaltz often within the same song. All Music wrote that, with each album he released, Prince showed remarkable stylistic growth and musical diversity, constantly experimenting with different sounds, textures, and genres, no other contemporary artist blended so many diverse styles into a cohesive whole. As a performer, he was known for his flamboyant style and showmanship. He came to be regarded as a sex symbol for his androgynous, amorphous sexuality, play with signifiers of gender, and defiance of racial stereotypes. His audacious, Idiosyncratic fashion sense made use of ubiquitous purple, alluring makeup, and frilled garments. His androgynous look has been compared to that of Little Richard White and David Bowie. Prince was known for the strong female presence in his bands and his support for women in the music industry throughout his career. Slate said he worked with an astounding range of female stars and promised a world where men and women looked and acted like each other. Influences and Musicianship Prince's music synthesized a wide variety of influences and drew inspiration from a range of musicians, including James Brown, George Clinton, Joni Mitchell, Duke Ellington, Jimi Hendrix, The Beatles, Chuck Berry, David Bowie, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Mick Jagger, Rick James, Jerry Lee Lewis, Little Richard, Curtis Mayfield, Elvis Presley, Todd Rundgren, Carlos Santana, Sly Stone, Jackie Wilson, and Stevie Wonder. Prince has been compared with jazz great Miles Davis in regard to the artistic changes throughout his career, Davis himself regarded Prince as an uncanny blend of Brown, Hendrix, Marvin Gaye, Stone, Little Richard, Ellington, and Charlie Chaplin. Journalist Nick Cohn described him as rock's greatest ever natural talent. His singing abilities encompassed a wide range from falsetto to baritone and rapid, seemingly effortless shifts of register. Prince was also renowned as a multi-instrumentalist. He was considered a guitar virtuoso and a master of drums, percussion, bass, keyboards, and synthesizer. On his first five albums, he played nearly all the instruments, including 27 instruments on his debut album, among them various types of bass, keyboards and synthesizers. Prince was also quick to embrace technology in his music making pioneering use of drum machines like the Lin LM1 on his early 80s albums and employing a wide range of studio effects. The Law Times also noted his harnessing of new generation synthesizer sounds in service of the groove, laying the foundations for post-70s funk music. Prince was also known for his prolific and perfectionist tendencies, which resulted in him recording large amounts of unreleased material. Legal Issues Pseudonyms in 1993, during negotiations regarding the release of The Gold Experience, a legal battle ensued between Warner Brothers and Prince over the artistic and financial control of his musical output. 
During the lawsuit, Prince appeared in public with the word slave written on his cheek. He explained that he had changed his name to an unpronounceable symbol to emancipate himself from his contract with Warner Brothers, and that he had done it out of frustration because he felt his own name now belonged to the company. Prince sometimes used pseudonyms to separate himself from the music he had written, produced, or recorded, and at one point stated that his ownership and achievement were strengthened by the act of giving away ideas. Pseudonyms he adopted, at various times, include, Jamie Starr and the Star Company, for the songs he wrote for the time and many other artists from 1981 to 1984, Joey Coco, for many unreleased Prince songs in the late 1980s, as well as songs written for Sheena Easton and Kenny Rogers, Alexander Nevermind, for writing the song Sugar Walls, 1984, by Sheena Easton, and Christopher, used for his song writing credit of Manic Monday, 1986, for the Bengals. Copyright Issues On September 14, 2007, Prince announced that he was going to sue YouTube and eBay, because they hosted his copyrighted material, and he hired the international internet policing company Web Sheriff. In October, Stephanie Lentz filed a lawsuit against Universal Music Publishing Group claiming that they were abusing copyright law after the music publisher had YouTube take down Lentz's home movie in which the Prince song Let's Go Crazy played faintly in the background. On November 5, several Prince fan sites formed Prince Fans United to fight back against legal requests which, they claim, Prince made to prevent all use of photographs, images, lyrics, album covers, and anything linked to his likeness. Prince's lawyers claimed that this constituted copyright infringement, the Prince fans united said that the legal actions were attempts to stifle all critical commentary about Prince. Prince's promoter AEG stated that the only offending items on the three fansites were live shots from Prince's 21 nights in London at the O2 Arena earlier in the year. On November 8, Prince Fans United received a song named P.F. Funk, providing a kind of unofficial answer to their movement. The song originally debuted on the PFU main site, was retitled F.U.N.K, and is available on the iTunes Store. On November 14, the satirical website B3TA.com pulled their image challenge of the week devoted to Prince after legal threats from the star under the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. DMCA. At the 2008 Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival, Coachella Festival, Prince performed a cover of Radiohead's Creep, but immediately afterward he forced YouTube and other sites to remove footage that fans had taken of the performance, despite Radiohead's request to leave it on the website. Days later, YouTube reinstated the videos, as Radiohead said, It's our song, let people hear it. In 2009, Prince put the video of the Coachella performance on his official website. In 2010 he declared the internet is completely over, elaborating five years later that the internet was over for anyone who wants to get paid, tell me a musician who's got rich off digital sales. In 2013, the Electronic Frontier Foundation granted to Prince the inaugural Raspberry Beret Lifetime Aggrievement Award for what they said was abuse of the DMCA takedown process. In January 2014, Prince filed a lawsuit titled Prince v. Kodira against 22 online users for direct copyright infringement, unauthorized fixation, contributory copyright infringement, and bootlegging. Several of the users were fans who had shared links to bootlegged versions of Prince concerts through social media websites like Facebook. In the same month, he dismissed the entire action without prejudice. Prince was one of a handful of musicians to consistently deny Weird Al Yankovic permission to parody his music. Personal Life Over the years Prince was romantically linked with many celebrities, including Kim Basinger, Madonna, Vanity, Sheila E., Carmen Electra, Susanna Hoffs, Anna Fantastic, Sherilyn Fenn, and Susan Munzi of Vanity 6 and Apollonia 6. Prince was engaged to Susanna Melvoin in 1985. When he was 37, he married his 22-year-old backup singer and dancer mate Garcia, on Valentine's Day 1996. They had a son named Amir Gregory Nelson on October 16, 1996, 
he was born with Pfeiffer syndrome and died a week later. Prince and mate divorced in 1999. In 2001, Prince married Manuela Testolini in a private ceremony, she filed for divorce in May 2006. Prince was an animal rights activist who followed a vegan diet for part of his life, but later described himself as vegetarian. The liner notes for his album Rave UN2 The Joy Fantastic, 1999, featured a message about the cruelty involved in wool production. Prince joined the Jehovah's Witnesses in 2001, following a two-year debate with friend and fellow Jehovah's Witness musician Larry Graham. Prince said that he did not consider it a conversion, but a realization. It's like Morpheus and Neo in the Matrix, he explained. Prince attended meetings at a local kingdom hall and occasionally knocked on people's doors to discuss his faith. Prince had needed double hip replacement surgery since 2005. A false rumor was spread by the tabloids that he would not undergo the operation because of his refusal to have blood transfusions. However, the Star Tribune reported that Larry Graham, Prince's mentor and Bible teacher, denied claims that Prince couldn't have hip surgery because his faith prohibited blood transfusions, putting the false rumor to rest, as hip surgery does not require blood transfusions. According to Morris Day, Prince in fact had the hip surgery in 2008. The condition was reportedly caused by repeated onstage dancing in high-heeled boots. Prince had been using canes as part of his outfit from the early 1990s onwards, towards the end of his life he regularly walked with a cane in public engagements, which led to speculation that it resulted from his not having undergone the surgery. As a Jehovah's Witness, Prince did not speak publicly about his charitable endeavors, the extent of his activism, philanthropy and charity was publicized posthumously. In 2001, Prince donated $12,000 anonymously to the Louisville Free Public Library System to keep the historic Western Branch Library, the first full-service library for African Americans in the country, from closure. Also in 2001, he anonymously paid off the medical bills of drummer Clyde Stebblefield, who was undergoing cancer treatment. In 2015, he conceived and launched Yes We Code paying for many hackathons outright and performing at some of them. He also helped fund Green for All. In late March 2016, Prince told an audience he was writing a memoir, tentatively titled The Beautiful Ones.